Okay, so I want to solve this differential equation. And so the first thing that I'm going to look at is that y prime. And I'm going to rewrite that. to say dy dt. So now I'm going to look on the right hand side so that we can try to classify what sort of differential equation this is. I've got y's and t's both, so it is not pure time and it is not autonomous. So the next thing I want to check is, is it separable? Can I write this side as something with t's times something with y's? And the answer is no. There's no way for me to do that. So the next thing that I'm going to check, and I'll tell you that in the context of our 17b class, if you've been asked to solve it, it's either separable or it's first order linear. Those are the only kinds of differential equations we're going to solve. We might talk about solutions for other things. We might even find numerical approximations for other things. Um, but if you've been asked to solve it, it's got to be separable or first order linear. So we've decided it's not separable, so I'm hoping it's first order linear. In order to be first order linear, we have to be able to write this in exactly the form y prime plus something times y equals something. And whatever goes in those boxes, in this case, because it's with respect to t, Whatever goes in these boxes can have t's, but no y's. So if I think about that equation and trying to put it into this standard form for the first order linear, I'm going to have to subtract that y over. So I'd have a negative 1y, and I'd be left with negative e to the t over here. So this is fine. It's in our standard form. Both of these are technically functions of t, even though this is just a constant. Once it's in our standard form for a first order linear differential equation, our next step is to find our integrating factor. Um, and I know that Dr. Dedell went through um, kind of where this mu comes from. I also put it in the notes up on Canvas. I'm also happy to go over it right now. If anybody wants me to go over where this formula comes from, just let me know. But otherwise, I'm going to practice using it. So we're going to find our integrating factor by writing e to the integral of, now here's something we need to know notation-wise about our standard form. Whatever is here being multiplied by the y, we call that p. And whatever is over here on the other side of the equal sign, once we have put it in standard form, is q. So we're going to find our integrating factor by integrating e to the integral of p dt. So for us, that integrating factor would be e to the integral of negative 1 dt, or e, when I integrate negative 1, I'll get negative t. The next step when we're solving a first order linear differential equation is to multiply everything through by that integrating factor. So I'm going to have e to the negative t y prime minus e to the negative t y is equal to e to the negative t times negative e to the t. On the left hand side over here, if we've done everything correctly, this must be a product rule. Sorry, that's a prime. So on this side, this should always be a product rule of, well, since it's a product rule, two things multiplied together. The two things should be y and whatever we just found for mu. Well, if we check that really quickly, if I were to apply a product rule here, I'd take the derivative of the y and multiply it by e to the negative t. 
plus, I'd leave the y alone and multiply by the derivative of e to the negative t, which would be e to the negative t times a negative one. So it worked. This matches up with our product rule. Then I'm gonna simplify whatever's on the right-hand side before we do our next step. Well, that minus sign I can bring out in front here. And because, I'm in, because I've got two things multiplied together that have the same base, I can rewrite that as e to the negative t plus t. Well, I've made this first one convenient for us. Negative t plus t is gonna give me zero, and e to the zero means I really just have one over here. Our next step in terms of our first order linear differential equation or integrating factors, I'm going to take the antiderivative of this derivative. So on the left hand side, I'm basically just getting rid of the prime and I'll have y times e to the negative t. But I've got to do the same thing to the right hand side, which means I'm going to need to integrate the one and we're integrating this with respect to t. Well, the integral of 1 dt would be t plus a constant. And over here on the left-hand side, I've got y times e to the negative t. So to finish solving this, I need to make this say y equals. So I'm going to divide both sides by e to the negative t. Or you could think about that as multiplying both sides by e to the t. So I'd have t over e to the negative t plus c over e to the negative t. We're almost done. This is our general solution, but because we were given an initial condition, we do want to go ahead and solve for that c value. If y of 0 is equal to 0, then I would be looking at 0 is equal to, well, when I plug in 0 for t, that's a 0, plus c over e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1, which means I'd have zero is equal to C. Okay, that's fine. So our final answer here would look like Y of T. If C is zero, then this whole piece goes away and I get T over E to the negative T. And that's my final solution.